This is What Do You Bring to the Table, a nonprofit project made by youth for youth that aims to explore the many, many career paths available within our Canadian food systems. By interviewing industry leaders across the country, we get a first hand look at the various existing and emerging agri food career opportunities with a particular focus on equity and sustainability. We want to thank the Gailey Foundation for their generosity in supporting this project, as well as the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. Please visit our website youthinfoodsystems.ca and sign up for our free monthly e-newsletter to stay involved. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Links to those are on our website. If you like what we're doing, please drop a like, review, or comment. Or, if you have the means to, contribute with a monetary donation through our website. Thanks for listening! This is Season 3, Episode 4, Jan and Horace. Hi everyone, my name is Jan and I'm a volunteer interviewer with Youth and Food Systems. Today we will be interviewing Harris Ahmed and learning about his foundation, Zero Food Waste Canada. Hi Harris, how are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for asking, Jan. Can you share a little about yourself, such as your hobbies and the foundation you're a part of? Yeah, so I guess I'll start with myself. Um, as you know, my name is Harris. I am in my final year of kinesiology at the University of Calgary. Um, I like to play basketball. Um, I've gotten back into reading. I haven't read in a while since um, for school often reading becomes a little bit boring. Um, so I've gotten back into reading. I really love to do origami and a little crafts. Um, and overall, I just have a passion for helping people um, and just making sure that they get access to whatever services that may be. Uh, so the foundation that I'm part of, uh, which kind of relates to the things I like to do, is Zero Food Waste. And so what Zero Food Waste does is we rescue excess food from local businesses and redirect that food that's perfectly safe to eat, but often is thrown out at the end of the day to local charities, directly to food insecure Calgarians, and our, and our other partners. Is there a place that you're based or located? Yeah, we're located in Calgary. Uh, we started in Calgary, actually, and we then expanded to Edmonton. Um, we saw that there was a need in other cities as well, and there was other passionate students just like us. Um, so I actually co-founded Zora Food with my sister, Fatma, and our uh, friend and peer, uh, Usher. Um, and so together, we founded it in Calgary. Uh, we're all university students who are just studying. I was actually in grade 12 uh, when we started. Um, oh, and we, wow. yeah, and we saw this need uh, that wasn't being met. Um, growing up, uh, when my parents were first immigrated to Canada, uh, they actually had jobs at Superstore. Um, my dad actually had a job at Superstore, and we saw that at the end of the day, there was a lot of food that actually was just thrown away just because uh, there was no one to pick it up. It was just easier to throw it away for those for that business. Um, and so a lot of food was going to waste and we got a little bit older. Um, coming from an immigrant household, food is uh, something that always is respected and should never be thrown away and you should always finish your plate. And so it was always instilled in us these values to, uh, what's called, to have respect for food. And so when we learned about this issue from our dad um, and we got, when we got a little bit older and realized that this issue is so widespread uh, that a one in three Calgarians face food insecurity in their life. Um, we decided to do something about it. And so we started in Calgary, we expanded to Edmonton, um, and we're also in Kingston, Ontario, Ottawa, as well as Hamilton. And we're hoping to expand to other chapters as well. That sounds great. I also part of, my family also immigrated here. So mm -hmm. although I never faced food insecurity, I know that members of my family have and it's great to know that you're doing something to help that i'm glad to hear uh, I'm, not, I'm not glad to hear that they're based with insecurity but i'm glad to hear that you can relate to that experience yeah. um even if it's not directly um yeah like food is something that shouldn't be like you shouldn't be able like you can't survive without it it shouldn't be something that is like oh well i can't afford food i guess i'm not eating 
Um, unfortunately, that's the reality of the world we live in. And we're hoping that we can, our small foundation can do a little bit to address some food insecurity, um, even if that's one meal um, for that week. That's great to hear. Blending into the next question. Yeah. So on your website that you're a kinesiology student, and how does this relate? Like, does your program and what you're studying relate to what you're doing now? I guess it doesn't relate that directly, um, I would call from an outside perspective. But going into kinesiology, a lot of what we learn in kinesiology is about exercise and nutrition. Uh, nutrition is actually the number one key factor to any exercise. Um, you can't really gain muscle, you can't really... I think a, a popular saying is that uh, most of exercise starts in the kitchen. And so as a kinesiology student, um, I've just gained a further understanding um, throughout my degree how important nutrition plays a role in being fit and being healthy and being able to do those activities of daily living, whether that's just taking a walk um, or just picking up a chair or whatever it may be. And so, yeah, and so as a kinesiology student, I just understand that the mission that Zero Food Waste that we I, that helped start in grade 12 is m more important than I even thought when we started it. Um, because nutrition is such so important. Uh, we started partnering with grocery stores. Um, and so before we were mainly focusing on places like Cops Red and Crepe Cupcakes, uh, as well as other bakeries, and which was great uh, since they were providing uh, important meals um, and parts of it were nutritious. Um, but then we started reaching out to grocery stores and we started partnering with them. And by reaching out to grocery stores and partnering with grocery stores, we were able to also source nutritious food. And so this is still food that's maybe a week from expiry. Uh, that's perfectly safe to eat, um, but they're going to throw away at the end of the week. So instead of throwing it away, instead they give it to us and we redirect that to places like the community fridge here in Calgary. Um, I don't know where you're located. I think it might be Toronto. Are you located in Toronto? Okay in Waterloo Kitchener. Waterloo Kitchener. Yeah, so I think uh, Waterloo actually probably has some community fridges as well. Um, so yeah, we've donated community so. fridges. Uh, in Calgary, we have a place called the Drop-In Center, the Mustard Seed. Um, we also donate to them. And then uh, we used to, we don't currently since uh, it was coming up with COVID, uh, we used to also directly hand off food with a local charity here in Calgary called Calgary Helping Homeless, uh, directly to food insecure Calgarians. And so, Derek, I guess to answer the question, my long-winded way of saying, uh, it, didn't it didn't motivate me to go find this foundation, my degree, but it definitely reinforced uh, why it was, the organization was co-founded. So is it like your passion to learn about the kinesiology and you could see how food is so important? Is yeah. such an important part of it? I would, I, I guess you like summed it up perfectly. Yeah, it's such an important part of exercise, part of living. Uh, and so it's part, I guess it's partly my passion uh, to learn about that. Um, kinesiology being a STEM field, I'm interested actually, I think you, have a, you might be asking me about this a little bit later, but I'm interested in pursuing something in the medical field, uh, whether that's like extended health services or medicine itself. And so, for me, uh, pursuing that, like, how, how, uh, food is such an important part of health and nutritious food is an even more, more important part of health. Um, like, I'm sure everyone's gone through that one day where you're, um, you just forgot to eat breakfast or you just didn't have time um, and you're basically tired the whole day. Uh, and someone who's tired the whole day won't be healthy, especially if it's consistently happening. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, it's not that they're forgetting to eat, they just don't have access to that food. And so it all kind of ties in together on my immigrant background, uh, where food has been valued so highly. Um, and then also going into being a kinesiology student, where we're learned, we learned the, the importance of nutrition and diet and exercise to be a healthy, functioning person. Sounds great. That is relates so much. For my next question, has it been challenging to manage your time as a full-time student as well as running a foundation? Um, it's definitely been a little bit challenging, but I would say that uh, with a strong team um, of people who are also very like-minded and passionate, 
about uh, addressing food insecurity and also doing that in a sustainable way. Um, it hasn't been as much pressure as I thought it would be going to university. Um, oftentimes, you know, sometimes for me, my what I'm what I have coming up at the moment, like some tests, might be more difficult. Um, and other times, my team members have, have something that's coming up that's a little bit more difficult. They need to focus their efforts on school. And so, what happens is we just take on a little bit more what we can. Um, there's for getting involved with us, like as an executive, there's no pressure, I guess. Like it's we understand that other feelings in life come first, and this is something that you're doing extra to help other people. And so, it's it's totally okay uh, when you need to take, take a step back. Um, I think that's been really important to realize is like when I have a test coming up, it's okay to take a step back for a bit um, and not focus on expansion so much and just maintain our operations. And then after that test passes, then I can go back to helping expand and reach out to more businesses. That's great to hear because I've been myself, I've been worried about like going into university if I'd have time for my hobbies and extracurriculars. But it's good to hear that you have time for it, especially yeah. if you have others who are helping you. I would say, Jan, the most important thing is making a good schedule and then realizing again, like I said, when it's getting too much. Because if it gets too much, it's not going to go away. It's just going to build, build, build until mm. <laughs> everything falls apart, right? So it's okay to take a step back. Um, I found the professors are super nice. Uh, and so if you ask them in advance, like, hey, this is something that's gonna, it's like taking up a lot of my time in my personal life. Is it okay if I get an extension on this? And they're pretty nice about it, honestly, at least in my experience in kinesiology at University of Calgary. It sounds great that the professors are supportive of what you do. Mm -hmm. So what does a typical day in your life look like? Like how many hours or how much time do you, would you spend working towards your foundation? Yeah, so... I'm the president of the Calgary chapter uh, of Zero Food Waste, and then I'm also part of the board. Um, and so what happens, I guess, as part of the Calgary chapter is whenever I have time in my day, maybe it's between, between classes when it's during school, um, I take a look at the email. I see if you've gotten any information. Um, sometimes it depends on who's doing what at that time period, um, since we also have people who are like dedicatedly reach out to local businesses, uh, people who help manage our volunteers, um, people who manage the social media. And so for me, it's stepping in where I'm needed. And so whether that's reaching out to local businesses, um, if the person reaching out to local businesses is maybe a little bit more swamped, um, or whether that's helping post on social media, if social media is busy, or if it's managing, helping manage volunteers. And so it varies a lot day to day. Um, so you have to have a wide range of like uh, skills to be able to implement um, at a moment's notice, I guess. For like you, if you're having like a lot of work in your life or school and stuff, does it work like the other members of your foundation will also help you out with those multiple tasks? Yeah, definitely. They'll take on more, they'll take on some responsibilities that I might have to help me out with that. Um, Oftentimes, I'll always have time to lead the meetings, uh, but I may not have time to help reach out to local businesses or volunteer coordinate, just depending on my schedule. Uh, and so then they'll just take that on and they'll um, handle that responsibility until I can also step in and then alleviate some pressure from them and help them out. And so it goes both ways. And I think that's really important when you are part of any volunteer organization is that the leadership and all, there's there's reciprocal leadership so people step up when they're needed um, and that's how you actually succeed with an organization because people have to be passionate about what you're doing and passionate enough to take lead take charge and take initiative it's great that everyone in your organization is so passionate about it so my next question was it challenging or scary for you to start your own foundation it was definitely really scary um, we did not know what we we're doing. Uh, we did not know what we we're doing at all. Uh, so at first it was reaching out to our first um, local business, which was actually Crave Cupcakes. And um, actually, no, it was a Cobb's bread. It was a specific Cobb's bread location um, in Calgary. I don't remember exactly which one now, um, but 
we basically reached out to them. My sister reached out to them. Uh, my sister Fatma reached out to them and basically let them know, like, hey, we're hoping to start this organization. We don't know if this is going to go anywhere, but um, we know that you might have some excess food. Uh, is this something that maybe we can start picking up from you guys? And so uh, slowly from there, uh, they were really, really nice. They really worked with us, um, helped us understand their needs so that we knew what we were doing. Um, since Cosbred already donates a lot of their excess food, so they've done this in the past. Um, and so we started collecting some excess food for one time a week. Um, and after we got to just the after we were doing that for a little while, we realized, hey, there's like other Cosbred locations, there's crepe cupcakes, there's other, there's grocery stores in Calgary, um, there's other smaller stores in Calgary that can maybe use our services. So then we started recruiting volunteers, we started asking our friends to help us with uh, pickups. Uh, and from there it just grew. Then we started, the friends started asking their friends and then we started posting about it on LinkedIn, on other volunteer sites. Um, and so we got volunteers that way. And ever since then we've been rescuing food. <laughs> so it was definitely scary. I think the number one the most important thing is it's okay to not have all those skills. Like you don't need to know how to recruit volunteers or how to lead meetings or how to do this you'll learn on the on the job as well. And if you reach out to other local um, nonprofits, there's always people there that will help you and guide you because they want to see you succeed and they want you to they want to see you also help people. That's reassuring to hear because for me and I'm sure there are other youth who are interested in like the social issues and starting their own foundation and stuff like that. But it's hard because they don't know where to start and they don't know if they have the skill set to maintain and do it. Yeah, I think the really important is not to set your expectations in the sense of like, okay, I have to do this huge thing, it has to be nationwide, it has to do this immediately. It's never going to work like that. Um, you should start with something small. Maybe you're passionate about, um, it's called collecting maybe extra clothing from people. And so maybe you, if you have extra clothes that you want to donate, Maybe start with that or ask your friends if they have extra clothes that you can donate um, and then go from there. And if it's something that is helping people, people are going to want to help too. And so it's just going to grow from there and it's going to be a very natural progression. Um, and yeah, just just start something because I think a lot of people think that something someone else will help, someone else will do something, uh, someone else will create change. Mm -hmm. But it has to start with you. And it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be... Um, where you're rescuing food from like multiple local businesses. It can just be one business. It can just be a neighborhood store. Uh, it can maybe be something a family friend is donating to you. Maybe it can be something small like that. It doesn't have to be big. As long as you you know that you're making a positive impact and you're seeing the positive impact, you're doing a good job. I think like a lot of people, like you said, want to like, when they think about this, they think want to do something big and make a really big impact but then they get fear that they could fail so then it gets really intimidating but it's good yeah. to hear that it's like for you in your in your experience that it's good to start small and just knowing that you're making a positive impact on some people is enough and the other important thing that actually i learned more recently um i would say like a year ago is i was at a panel where one of the leads for the Community Fridges program in Calgary was there um, and she was speaking to us about uh, what it means for her to be a lead and one of the really important things that she said to me, uh, she said to the audience was uh, it's okay if um, if your organization doesn't last forever. It, the positive impact doesn't have to last forever as long as you're making a positive impact at all. That's the most important thing. And so it doesn't have to last forever. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. It can be it can be even like a one day thing, but um, no one else is going to make that change. Right? No one else is going to uh, act up. No one else will do what you do because your ideas are unique. You are going to change change, uh, the, change a little part of your community. And maybe that little part of your community, you can even change the world. You never know. That's really good to hear. And I think really reassuring for a lot of people and motivating to start their own foundation. My next question is, how do you source your food? And was it challenging at first to get some businesses involved? Because I know that they could be losing some profits because of it. Yeah, so for sourcing our food, 
we source our food by reaching out to local businesses that might have excess food. Um, and so that's usually grocery stores and bakeries. Uh, sometimes it's smaller businesses as well, like restaurants. And it's food that's left over at the end of the day for bakeries, or it's food that's maybe a week or a, a little bit of time, like two weeks away from expiry. And so it's food that is likely not going to sell in that time frame. And so instead of pouring it out, they give it to us. And it was really challenging getting that first business because obviously we didn't have that much experience in this field at all. And so when we were talking to Cobb, that one first Cobbsbury location, they were a bit skeptical um, of our ability to handle it. Um, but we asked them to give us, you know, to let us try one time. And if they like what we're doing, um, we can do it another time and then another and then another. Uh, it's There's no commitment. They don't have to sign up forever. Um, so that was really reassuring to them. Uh, the other thing that we really tell businesses is that um, it costs a lot. It costs money to throw out food. It costs money to get uh, it's called disposal services there to grab the food and throw it out. Um, we're saving you money actually by taking that food off your plate. Um, the other thing is it looks really good for businesses too when they are donating the excess food because it's excess food, right? It's it's food they're already going to throw away or they're not going to use, and so. Um, instead of throwing it away, they can give it to people who really need this food. And we give out like little stickers to businesses sometimes uh, that they can put on the front window to show that they're donating the excess food to those in need. Um, and that really helps uh, drive up people who are interested in food security or people who even realize that like, hey, like people should get to eat, uh, will want to buy at your business more since you are donating that excess food. It's great that like you've gone from one business being skeptical about like giving you their food to a lot of different places and even grocery stores that are like giving you their extra food for you guys to donate. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, we do get a lot of no's. Um, whether it be like they don't have enough excess food or um, they just don't see the point in donating. Um, but that makes every yes a little bit sweeter because it feels like a bigger win. Um, and every yes, like those, the more yeses we get, the more businesses that we're going to say no are not going to say yes because they see it helping other businesses, they see it working for other businesses. That's great. And do you have any plans for expanding your foundation in the future? Yeah, we're hoping to expand to other Canadian cities. And so if there are any youth leaders out there um, who are interested in food insecurity, I really encourage you guys to reach out to us on zerofoodways.ca. Uh, because we want to expand to different cities. We are not anywhere in British Columbia or Manitoba or Saskatchewan, and even a lot of places on Ontario itself. And so if your community you feel has local businesses that might have some excess food, um, that's a way to start. And it doesn't have to start huge. Again, like I said, you can start with a couple of businesses that you might know of, you can talk to them and we'll help you along the way too. We'll give you the resources and we'll teach you the, I guess, the ways that we failed and the ways that we didn't fail so that uh, you don't make those same mistakes that we did. It's kind of like great and funny to hear that in when you're helping the youth who are trying to start their own like branch, it's like how your past self and you got help from the first bakery place and now you're yeah. helping the new youth. No, 100% because honestly, if they hadn't, um, it's called taking the time to work with us or answer our questions, um, even no matter how annoying they were. Um, like we might have not even gotten started. We might have not even made the impact that we've made so far. And so it was really nice for them to do that. And we really, really appreciate them. Um, and so we definitely want to do that for other people too, because there's so much, so much, so much food that's going to waste. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I believe it was in the millions. Uh, of tons like, of food that goes to waste in Canada. For my last question, what are your plans after graduating? Do you see yourself continuing to work in this industry and in the foundation? Yeah, I think I'm always going to be involved in the nonprofit field, whether that's through volunteer work or as an occupation. Um, so I would love to continue working with Zero Food Ways and maybe helping new youth leaders after I am a little bit older. Uh, take my place and learn how to run Zero Food Ways, how to help rescue this food uh, so they can get that experience and they can also 
bring in fresh and new ideas uh, that we can use and that we can utilize to help rescue even more food. Uh, as for me, my plans after graduating are hope, again, hopefully pursuing something in the medical field, whether that's something in extended health services um, or medicine itself. Um, so I'm really hoping to do that. And I think that ties in pretty well with zero food waste as health, uh, food access and um, nutritious food access is such an important part of health. Those are all the questions I have for today. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Harris, today for being here for the interview. We really appreciate it and hope you have good luck on the future of your foundation. Thank you so much, Dan. You've been a great interviewer. We hope you enjoyed this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table, a project of Seeds of Diversity's Youth and Food Systems Program. Thanks again to the Gailey Foundation, the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation, and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. And of course, thanks to you for listening. See you again soon. Thank you.